grandma and dear great grandpa. This is for both of you. Dear great grandma and dear great grandpa, we all love you. This is from the family on your Olden Annie. Golden, darling. Golden? Golden anniversary. Yes, that means they've been married 50 years. On your golden anniversary. Very good, Sylvia. Don't be upset. Are you ready, Amelia? Yes, Andrew. years you've kept me from publishing this because i love you i don't want you to be laughed at but at least i want to read it to my family they'll never believe it unless they hear it from me i've heard it for 50 long years and i still don't believe it now come on dear the children are waiting they might think we're arguing but i'm not arguing my love this story is true it tells what happened to me now larry you just don't believe in miracles. Don't try to tell it, darling. Nobody believes in miracles nowadays. <laughs> Newspaper office or a saloon? The newspaper office, Mr. Gordon. Gordon. Have a drink, Mr. Gordon? I never drink. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, in this office. But, Mr. Gordon, this is my party. I'm saying farewell to the dead. The dead? Who died, Stephen? 500 people. Five? 500 obituaries that I've written. Well, no more obits for me. Remember, the front page is written in the morning. If you're going to be a reporter, from now on, better get to sleep early. I'm going to sleep right now, Mr. Gordon. Hey, look. I'm going to sleep right now. Hey, careful, my boy. You're laying right in the middle of 1843. Well, not a bad place to sleep, Pops. A bad of ancient news. Well, you just be careful with my files. Ah, uh, there's nothing as dead as yesterday's news. Yesterday's news? <laughs> You've no imagination, young man. News is what happens. What's the difference, whether it happens 50 years ago or tomorrow? You mean will happen tomorrow? No. Time is only an illusion. Look. March 18th, 1875. Yeah. To the people then, uh, this was the future, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, supposing we were all living on that date in 1875, mm -hmm. and I arrive with this book. I can tell you everything that will happen. <laughs> well, give me the one for the year we're living in now, Pop, and you can name your own price. <laughs> but it's here, my boy. <laughs> They're all here. Look. 19th century? 20th? I can't quite see the 20th, Bob. Unfortunately, we can't. But if we could, look, we'd know what will happen, say, in 1906. Mm. That's too far away, Pop. I'd like to know what'll happen next year. No, just 24 hours from now. 
I did the front page of my first story. That's what I want, Pop, tomorrow's newspaper. How much? <laughs> no, Larry, no. Don't ask a thing like that. Oh, come on. Come on, let's have it, Pop, huh? <laughs> I wish I could. Then you'd learn it's no good to know the future. We all got to die someday. But if we knew the day, even if it was 20 years old... Ah, they're not corking good time for 20 years. My boy. Every day of your life would be poisoned. If I knew where I could get tomorrow's newspaper, I'd give 10 years of my life for it. <laughs> How do you know you got 10 years? <laughs> He's got you there, Larry. Oh, forget about tomorrow. You want me to tell you what's going to happen in the next five minutes? Sure. Yeah. Why? We'll all be thirsty. There's no more beer. Oh, oh, I hope that somebody else buys it. Want to come along, Pop? No, I haven't time. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. For winter gloomy winter, there rains for us no more. For winter gloomy winter, no more. I would not die in springtime. Wait a minute, Tom. Wait a minute. If you're interested in the future, look there. Sigolini. <laughs> With a name like that, he'll tell your future in Italian. Yeah, and you won't know what he's talking about. He won't either. He's just a faker. Yeah, but look at the girl. Yeah, she's pretty. That's no fake. That's a fake, too. They all look good on posters. Oh, what we need is a drink. Come on. That's Inside, fine. you'll find she's fair, fat, and 40. Hello, my friend. Tell me, what is the number in the case of your watch? Well, I don't know. You don't know? You don't? But you have a watch, you have a oh, tooth. sure. May I, I see it, please? Uh, well, I had a watch. Well, look, that is your watch <laughs> now. <laughs> it's a funny how these trifles are getting misplaced. <laughs> Sylvia, do you hear me? I hear you. Now, listen up carefully. Do you see inside the case of this watch? I will try. I will try. Tell me, what is the number inside of the case of this watch? Two, seven, nine. Oh, I can't. You got it, Sylvia. I can tell you. Three, three, five, ninety-four. Aha! Is that a correct, my friend? No, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Step right down ahead of you. Thank you. Another chair, please. Thank you. I beg your pardon. My friend, she cannot hear you. She only hears the voice of the Shigolini. She is in a trance. Well, then tell her I beg your pardon, young man. She is unaware of your presence. She can only see the invisible. Could you make me invisible? <laughs> that you could do for yourself. By sitting down. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And now, my friend, what is your question? Well, I, I gave it to you. Oh, uh, oh, sure, 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 sure. Tell me, my friend, is this in your handwriting? Yep, that's it, all right. <laughs> we get a this question here every night. Miss Sylvia has not been to this about in the future. I'm very sorry, my friend, but you're losing your bet. William McKinley is a very a worthy man. <laughs> got it, got it. I've been a Republican party going to have a no chance. The next president of the United States will be William James Bryant. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, all. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, well, just a minute, sir. There's a senior here who doesn't seem to agree with me. Tell me, what are you, a Republican? <laughs> uh, Professor, I have a question. It concerns a certain young lady. And you want to know if she's going to have the misfortune to marry you. Is that it? <laughs> All I want to know is whether she'll have lunch with me tomorrow. The young senior wants to know if the girl he loves is going to have lunch with him tomorrow. Yes, she will. Thank you. But I'd like to know where we'll meet. My friend, that do you have to arrange with the lady yourself. That I'd like to do, but she can't hear me. She's in a trance. <laughs> Just a minute, sir, my good friend. Sigolini has put the young lady's mind to sleep, and Sigolini is not sure just when she's going to awaken. And that is why Miss Sylvia will be unable to accept any social engagements. <laughs>
Hello. Remember me? No, I'm afraid I don't. But you answered my question. I was asleep. Besides, you were very rude. Well, how do you know I was, if you were asleep? May I take you home? No, thank you. You mean I can't come inside? I always go home alone. 105 North Elm Street, driver. And take it easy. Go slow. No, go fast. I'm in a hurry. I'm in no hurry. Take your time. Now, listen to me. Who hired this cab? The gentleman did, miss. He's kept me here waiting for half an hour. It's a pleasure. You don't mind my riding with you in my own cab, do you? I certainly do. Oh. Cabby. I'm sorry. I've hired this cab. You've hired it, huh? Well, why don't you get into it? All right, Cabby, take him away. 23 skidoo. Thank you, Professor. And don't try to see him again. You'd better drive on. My uncle might see you. Good night. I can look into the future myself. You're going to see me again very soon. See, my prediction is right. I told you I'd see you again very soon. Oh, be careful. Go away. Oh, no. Not till I know whether your prediction is right or not. Prediction? Don't you remember? The signora would like to know if the girl he loves will have lunch with him at tomorrow. You said she will. I never remember anything I say when I'm in a trance. Well, in case you do, I'll be waiting for you at the evening news office tomorrow till 1 o'clock. Good night. Oh, wait. Uh, the name is Stevens. Lawrence Stevens. Just ask for Larry. Scare. Don't tell me you've been drinking alone. What are you doing here so late? Didn't I tell you time doesn't exist? I was waiting for you, Larry. For me? Well, I didn't say I was coming back. I, I was just on my way home. So am I. But I wanted to give you this first. <laughs> well, it's the evening news. I've read it. Maybe not. You better go home and sleep it off, Bob. I never felt better in my life. Good night, Larry. Wait, I'll take you home. Oh, no, thanks, my boy. We go different ways. Don't lose it. Mr. Stevens. Mrs. Keever, today I start a new life. Starting a little late in the morning. Well, I overslept. Had wonderful dreams. Better take a coat. You're a little chilly today. Don't you think love might keep me warm? Do you call this a month of May? Last night, fog, cold this morning. How goes it, Joe? Not so good. They're looking for a job. You mind if I take a look at your paper? I haven't got one. Sure you have one. Here in your coat. Evening news. That's last night's paper. I don't mind. It's the want ads I'm after. This ain't last night's paper. It's today's. No, Joe. Today's evening news hasn't gone to press yet. Must be last night's. What day is today? Wednesday. But this says Wednesday. Wednesday? They must have made a mistake. What day's today? Wednesday. All day.
snow. It didn't snow yesterday, did it? No. Unseasonable snowfall, 8 o'clock in the morning. I didn't see any snow, did you? How could I? There wasn't any. Yes, it's Wednesday the whole day. And what a day. Snow in May. Eight o'clock in the morning. What time is it? Can't you see for yourself? Here's something. They need a waiter at Beacon and Fifth. I guess I'll get right over there. We don't need any waiters. But this paper says We don't need any waiters, understand? Then why waste people's time putting ads in the paper? You probably got the wrong address. Here it is. You say you didn't put an ad in the paper for a waiter? No, we did not. I tell you, we don't need any waiters. <laughs> This is the last dishes you break here. You have fire. Get your head on, Maisie. Take it all off from the tail and put a nail in the paper right away. What are you staring at me for? In the morning paper? No, I want another man right away. Put it in the evening news. What do you want? Nothing. Nothing. Seen him, Larry. Where's Pop? Search me, Larry. Have you seen Pop? No, I haven't, Larry. Hey, what's your hurry? I gotta find Pop. The old man hasn't shown up yet, Larry. Stevens. Mr. Gordon, do you know where Pop Benson is? Never mind about Pop Benson. You come into my office. But I've gotta find Pop. Something's happened I don't understand. Something's happened that I understand very well. You're late. I know, but when I tell you what happened... Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. If you're ever late, this office again... Gordon, who's covering the Melba concert at the Opera House? Now, don't tell me you want to be a music critic. But suppose something happens there, a front-page story, the biggest news of the day. In that case, I'll send an experienced reporter, not you. Oh, but I ought to be there before it happens. You're either crazy or drunk. Still drunk, I mean. I'm going to show you something that'll change your mind. You're fired! You can't fire me. I quit. You quit. You, you... I mean, I will quit tonight if you haven't given me a raise. A raise? Yes! For the biggest news story of the day. Set up a four-column headline right now. Bandits steal cash at Opera House while Melba sings. At ten minutes past two. Hey, did you get fired? Yeah, but I'm going to get a raise. Uh-huh. 
Can I help you? Uh, can we all help you? Well, I, I'm looking for Mr. Stevens. Oh, I'll get him for you. Larry, she's here. Who? Don't kid me. You know who. How did you do it? I forgot. Yeah, you forgot. Miss Smith, this is the day of miracles. I was just passing by, Mr. Stevens. I was waiting for you. Uh, yes, I knew you intended to wait, so I, I felt it was my duty to tell you that I can't have lunch with you. Oh, I see. You think we haven't known each other long enough. Oh, you're very understanding, Mr. Stevens. Well, that's too bad. I, I could have told you something wonderful has happened. You know why I came. Tell me your secret. How would you like to hear the Melba concert? You're changing the subject. Oh, no, I'm not. That's part of the secret. Something's going to happen at the Opera House. You haven't much time to get there. Oh, I couldn't go with you, Mr. Stevens. But what's going to happen? I'll tell you. Two, sir? What time is it, please? Five past two. The concert's just started, sir. Oh, we're late. Oh, no, no. We're a few minutes early. I'll bet you a pair of tickets I can tell you how much you've taken in. $3,675. You lose, my friend. Thirty-six seventy even. Hmm. Must be a mistake somewhere. Guess I'll have to buy that pair. How much? Two fifty each. Five dollars. Five dollars? Well, that makes it right. Thirty-six hundred and seventy-five dollars. But that isn't all the secret, is it? Oh, no. That's just the money that's going to be stolen. Come inside. You'll be safer. Please. We'll stand right here. That's not permitted, sir. We're leaving in a few minutes. Mr. Stevens, I don't want to leave in a few minutes. The show will be over. You mean Madame Melba? The big show isn't there. It's here in the lobby. to ask for tickets, and then one man will draw a pistol. I have to get my story in the first edition. I think you'd better let me out here. Oh, no, no, no. I need you. What for? Well, my city editor will think I'm faking. I have to have a witness. But, Mr. Stevens, how did you know Do you that... think you're the only one who can read the future? Oh, Mr. Stevens. What kind of a cock and bull story is this? Mr. Gordon, don't waste time. The paper's going to press any minute. What time do you say this happened? Ten minutes ago. I was there. Are you trying to tell me you wrote all this in ten minutes? Don't ask questions. Please, if you have any sense, print my story. You will pick those up again. Miss Smith, tell him what you saw. Well, I, I didn't see anything. Ah! Well, no, what I mean is, I was listening to Melba, and when Mr. Stevens pulled me out, it was all over. What was all over, young lady? Well, the, the things he wrote. Oh. I fired you once. Now do I have to throw you out? It will be printed. You will see it on the front page. Don't worry, everything is going to be all right. Oh, hello, Inspector. Anything wrong? Plenty. There's been a holdup at the opera house. Hold the press! Copy! Copy! Yes, sir. Set the sub paragraph, page one, two columns spread. Shoot it through. What's the headline, Chief? Um, uh, how about bandits steal cash at opera house while Melba sings? That's it. By Lawrence Stevens. I, uh... 
My Lawrence Stevens. Yes, sir. I guess maybe I was a little uh, hasty. But tell me now, how did you do it? I'll come back later and talk to you about that raise, Chief. Thank you, Inspector. You came just in the nick of time. Stevens, we'd like to know a little more about this. Oh, sure, sure. But I, I can't identify the men. I didn't see their faces. I see. You know everything about the job except who they were. <laughs> That's just about, about the size of it, yeah. I see. Is this the man? Yes, sir, that's, that's him. him. Now, wait a minute. You, uh, you can't talk to me like that. Shut but... up. Now, take it easy, Inspector. Stevens is the best reporter I've got. I want to find out what he was doing at the opera house during the holdup. Boy, I, I, I took this young lady to the Melba concert. Well, now, you don't need to be modest, Larry. Tell him the truth. You told me this morning what would happen. Just what I figured. Oh, but please, please, he didn't do anything wrong. I was there with him. I'll question you later, young woman. Please wait outside. Now, keep your hands off of that young lady. She had nothing to do with this. Just how long have you been tied up with this gang? What gang? The four men who pulled this hold up. There were only three. There were four. You were the fourth. I said there were only... Yeah. Don't pull me, Mike. Look, Stevens, you're not as smart as you think you are. By Lawrence Stevens. His first day as a reporter, and he gets his name on the front page. Oh, he's got a great future when he gets out of jail. You think they can put him in jail? Of course yes, they can. can. But what for? For being an accomplice. Oh, don't worry. He won't get more than five or ten years with a good lawyer. Why don't you have dinner with me, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll all talk about it. Stevens, you're the most stubborn man I've ever known. Now, what was the name of these people? Come on. I'll put you in jail, Stevens, for the rest of your natural life if you don't tell me the truth. Now, for heaven's sake, tell him the truth. Mr. Gordon, where's Pop Benson? Stop asking that! Look, how did you know that this holdup was going to happen? All right. I'll tell you, but you won't believe me. I read it in a newspaper last night. What newspaper? Today's evening news. <laughs> oh, stop this tomfoolery! Well, wait, I'll prove it to you. Well, look, here it is. Isn't that today's newspaper? Well, I'm asking you, isn't that today's newspaper? And what is this? But they were all just printed today. I got mine last night. Larry, a joke's a joke, but don't carry it too far. Oh, well, let's go to headquarters. Oh, please, please. Please, he's done nothing wrong. I know he hasn't. You'll keep out of this, young woman. Now, one last chance. How did you know the holdup was going to happen? I read it in that... Shut case. up! Verb, get him out of here. Come on. Wait! I told him what was going to happen at the opera house. Take him away. Come on, Take him away. Sylvia, you can't help me. Inspector, don't believe her. Don't believe a word she says to you. How did you know about this holdup, young woman? Well, I... Well, sometimes I can see things that are going to happen. Well, can you see what's going to happen now? Well, you're coming along with us. Did she show up yet? No, and I can't understand her. She's never been late. Too bad. Mr. Bextein here is scouting for Barnum and Bailey. Mr. Bextein, gee, what a thrill. You know, it's been a dream of my life to go on tour with you people. I'm afraid we aren't interested in mind-reading acts. They come a dime a dozen. Oh, but why, they're sensational. I can't wait. <laughs> wait, Mr. Bextein, here she comes down. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Oscar. It's not my Listen, fault. Mr. Bextein's here from Bottom and Betas. Now, come on, get on your clothes in there. We'll all run away. Now, hurry up. Don't stall here. Yeah? Oh, gee, Mr. Bextein. You know, when I was a young kid, this high, I... One moment, signal lady. What do you want? Just a little information. I'm also interested in your act. You hear that, Mr. Bextein? <laughs> you got some competition. <laughs> the young lady tells me that you can read the future. Is that right? Future. Past, present, and future. Then you could have predicted what happened today? Why, sure, sure. Anything. And your niece was telling the truth when she said you predicted this? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> oh, sure, we predicted this. Happens all the time. <laughs> well, now you're going to stay and see our act, Mr. Bextein? I think I will. Oh, that's great. I know you're going to like it. <laughs> you're very busy. I'll see you after the performance. Thanks. Say, by the way, what will you do with my niece? I'm Police Inspector Mulrooney. Police? And if I were you, the next time I made a prediction like this, I would inform the police. You'll find it safer.
Professor Sigolini. How about predicting something that will happen now, tonight, or tomorrow? Well, a senor, my uh, medium is far-sighted. Things that are too close sometimes are out of the focus. <laughs> and how does she predict the holdup that took place today? You are right, my friend. I forgot. <laughs> but uh, sometimes she can see things like that. Sometimes? What about now? Uh, well, I'm sorry, but our time is up. You'll have to ask it out of question some other time. <laughs> Will something happen tonight? A crime, a fire, theft, murder, something like that? Sylvia, I know you're very tired, but do you see anything going to happen tonight? I can't hear you. I told you she was very tired. She can't even hear me. Speak louder. <laughs> Sylvia, try, try hard. What do you see? I see nothing. <laughs> that shows it's a moonless night. Why can anybody see anything in the dark? Thank you, Professor. I am not in the dark. I see an open and shut case. Wait a minute, see you. Wait a minute. Wait. No. No, I see in the darkness. It is night. Yes, tonight. I see a river, a bridge. I see a woman walking. Then what happened? She jumps. She's in the water. She goes under. Ah! I don't see her anymore. Please. So All you got to do is talk, son, and you'll be out of here. Just tell us where we can collar them desperados. Try and remember. I tell you, I don't know. I'll be outside if you want to talk to me. Think it over. It wasn't worth ten years of your life, was it? Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Oh, just around, my boy. Did I meet you last night or did I dream it? Tell me, did you give me a newspaper? It didn't do you any good, did it, Larry? Oh, Papa Miller Jam, nobody believes me. I can't get out of here. Why don't you say something? What are you looking at me like that for? I'm kind of surprised to see you here, that's all. I figured you'd be on your way to the river by this time. He ought to be there a little after midnight. You gotta be. Who says so? Why, I just read it. Don't tell me that's the next tomorrow's paper. Isn't that what you want? No! You want to tell me something? No. Yes. Maybe. Wait. Pop, does it say anything in the paper about those bandits? Why, well, here it is. They've been arrested. When were they? Where? Tomorrow morning in the Union Bank. The police were waiting for him. You wrote that. But what about me? Oh, you'll be a hero. For telling the police? Oh, no. Uh, I'd better read it to you. Unknown woman makes suicide leap. Jumps to death from 9th Street Bridge. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter makes heroic attempt at rescue in river. Body not yet recovered. Shortly after midnight last Now night, I don't believe a word of it. Why, it says so here. But I'm being held here. I can't get away. Even if I could, I wouldn't go to the river. Even if I did, I wouldn't jump in. What kind of a monkey do you think I am to risk my life for a woman I don't know when I do know she can't be saved? Don't ask me, my boy. I'm no prophet. I'm just reading this. Enough! Enough! I never want to hear that paper again! No hollering for me. No, get out of here and leave me alone. Look, if you let me out, I'll tell you where you can get those bandits. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Tomorrow morning at the Union Bank. All you have to do is wait for them. Come along, mister. All right, Stevens, all right. We'll be waiting at the bank. But if you're fooling us, remember we know where to pick you up. You can go now. Thanks, Inspector. Oh, uh, where's Miss Smith? I, I owe her an apology. Miss Smith disappeared after the show, Mr. Stevens. Her uncle says he don't know where she's gone. That's right, I don't know, but he knows. 
Listen, this guy's trying to steal my niece. She's infatuated with him. Say that again, please. Oh, listen, you young whipper step I'll hit you over the head. All right, shut up, shut up to both of you. Before you go, Stevens, I'd like to get to the bottom of this. At what time did the girl tell you about the holdup? She didn't tell me at all. Of course she didn't. Now you're lying. Listen, I ain't lying. A couple of hours ago, you admitted it. I didn't know you was a police inspector. Oh, I see. Oh, you don't understand. I was just putting on an act for Bexter. That's Bottom and Bailey's big man. Don't you understand? Listen, how could you? You're an intelligent man. How could you believe that we could predict anything we don't know nothing about? And by the way, who heard the prediction? Did you hear it? I didn't. No, but I did hear the prediction tonight. Ah, oh, that's bunk, Inspector. Bunk. How could she know anything about a bridge and a river and a woman committing suicide? Now, how could she? Did Sylvia say that? Shut up. She was just trying to get us all out of a tight hole. You too. Bridge? A river? Did she say the body would never be found? She didn't say that. No. She didn't know. Hey, what is this nonsense? Don't let that guy get away. You keep him in here if you know your business. If I know my business, you're coming with me. Wait! We'll save her. Oh, I know you won't. You know, eh? Are you her husband? No, let me go. Wait. Just who are you, anyway? Larry Stevens, Evening News. What a man. If I could swim, I'd do it, too. What was his name? Oh, Stevens, Evening News. What they won't do to get a story. Darling, I knew you were in danger. Well, I wasn't. I was just trying to save you. <laughs> it looks like we were both trying to save each other. Well, I had to make a prediction, and then I had to make it look like it really happened. Oh, you wonderful, foolish little darling. Yes, but I, I didn't know. You didn't know what? That the water would, would be so cold. <laughs> Now I know the newspaper was wrong. Newspaper? Oh, never mind. You're here, alive. I found you. Oh. Here. There's a boat. Look! Her hat floating. Her hat, maybe, but the girl must have gone down like a stone. Oh. But let's go on further. Yeah, no hurry. It'll be just another case of body not recovered. Did you hear that? That's what I want them to think. Body not recovered. Gee, Josephat, I get it. That'll be the headline. Not if they find me here. Well, don't worry, they won't. I know they won't. Oh, no, no, you're dripping wet. How could I explain a girl's tax in the hallway? Open the door. All right, you can come in now. Hey, you're just a little thing, aren't you? I feel perfectly silly. How can I go home like this? There's nobody on the street this time of night, and besides, you look very respectable. Don't even need a shave. What's the matter you tired? Oh, I, I nearly choked myself trying to tie it the way you do. Yeah, let me do it. 
Ouch. <laughs> Sorry. Now, look, you take both ends like this, see? Mm -hmm. And you put right over left. Now you cross left over right. <laughs> I'm all mixed up. Uh, Why, well, no, it's backwards for me. Come over here. Oh, that's better. Watch closely. You might have to do this for your husband someday. You know, on you, this suit looks good. It's the first time I've liked it. I'm sorry, I looked in the closet and couldn't find a girl's dress any place. I should hope not. Matter of fact, I don't care. Well, I'm glad you're not the jealous type. What would I be jealous of? Well, if you cared at all, I'd have to tell you that I'm a very busy character. I haven't got time to be interested in girls. Oh! Last night in the cab, you didn't act like a man who's not interested in girls. Last night? Great Scott. What? Was it only last night we met? You mean to tell me all this happened since last night? Sure. I met the old man on the way home after I left you. Give me your newspaper. I want to read it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he didn't give it to me tonight. He only read it to me. Well, the old man was outside the window, and I... Oh, what's the use? Nobody believes this. Oh, Larry, you have a wonderful imagination. You ought to join our act. Maybe you could read a number inside a watch. Say, by the way, how do you do that trick? We magicians never reveal our secrets. Right, Larry? But I have no secrets. I'm telling you the truth. Well, last night, when the old man gave me the paper, I didn't even read it. But this morning... Larry. Hmm? Oh, Larry, this, this is awful. I fell asleep. Did you? Oh, why didn't you wake me? Oh, I guess I was dreaming, too. Besides, your shoes aren't dry yet. Oh, I can't wait any longer. I, I have to put them off. Oh. Oh, it's shrunk. Oh! Oh, darn. What do I do now? Oh, no, no, don't get out. Oh, please go. Don't stay here. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, my key. You lost it? Oh, I left it in my purse in the dressing room. Well, what about your window? Oh, thank goodness I left that unlocked. Well, here, I'll help you. Oh, no, 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 please. Please go. The cat man's watching. Are you sure you can make it? Oh, yes, yes. Good night. You can go now. Yes, sir. Good night. Maybe he'll go away. He'll go a whole lot faster if we all scream for the police. <gasps> you stay right here. I'll go find a policeman. I'm not afraid. Folks are up a bit late. Shh. We was waiting for you. Oh, well, thank you. That's mighty kind of you, dear ladies. But uh, <clears throat> I was being entertained tonight by an old friend of mine, Inspector Mulroney. 
He wanted my advice. Tell me, have you seen my niece? Indeed, we have. I was a bit worried. She was kind of nervous tonight. Indeed. Yeah, she went off by herself. I guess she went to bed early. Well, if she did, she got up again because we saw her at the window. Well, the poor girl's probably worried about me. I'll tell her I'm home. Sylvia, are you awake, dear? She'll not be answering you, Professor, and you cooing like a pigeon. She must be awake if you saw her at the window. That's not all I've seen. I've seen a man. And he's in there now. Oscar, what's wrong? Just some nosy people trying to scandalize your name. That's what's wrong. What do you mean, say there's a man in my niece's room? Just a bunch of scandal mongers. That's what you are. They can be busted on an innocent young girl this time of the night and scared of you. Oh, boy, get the name. You're all liars. Now come in here and see for yourself. Look everywhere. Look in that closet. Look under that bed. Get out. Get out, all of you. Now get out yourself. Come on, I see you. Get out from under that bed or I'll pull you out. Hey, which way did he go? Who? The fella jumped out that window. The guy that jumped out that window. Smart guy, huh? Come Wait a minute, officer, let me... Have they found Stephen's body yet? They're still dragging the river. Sweeney, have you finished his obituary? Yes, sir. Refer to him as Lawrence Stevens, not Larry. Give it a little dignity. Cut it down. It's too long. Yes, sir. Any further details? Only that he jumped into the river. And he just couldn't swim. That's all. Would have made a fine reporter. You bet he oh, would. Oh, a swell guy with it. Yes, sir. Mr. Gordon! Mr. Gordon! Stephen! Larry! I've got a great story. Have I got a job? Yes! Do I get a raise? Yes, I'm supposed to story. So please just trap those opera house bandits. Where? The Union Bank. I was there. Sit down. Write it. Take all the space you want. Give them this desk. Kill his obit. Obit? Yes, you're supposed to be drowned. Yeah, dead hero. Didn't you try to save a woman in the river last night? Oh, stop writing. Change these headlines. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, makes a heroic attempt at rescue in river. Lawrence Stevens. I said Larry. Now let him alone. He's got to make the first edition. Now be a pal, Larry. How come you were at the Union Bank when this happened? Just passing by. Listen, hero, how did you happen to cross the 9th Street Bridge just as the woman jumped in? Just passing by. Well, Tommy, you were just passing by the opera house yesterday. Yeah, I got a notice for news. Come on, how'd you do it? You really want to know? Yes. yes. Well, I'll tell you. Do you believe in miracles? Oh, no. Tell the truth, Larry. Who tipped you off? Anything I want to know, I can find out. Well, Mr. Gordon, could I have an advance of $100? Oh, yes, Larry. What for? Well, I've got some plans. Not thinking of getting married, are you? Why not? Anything he wants to know, he can find out. <laughs> but he has to borrow because he found a girl. <laughs> if what you say is true, why don't you find her a million for a wedding present? A million? Sure, by picking all five winners at the racetrack tomorrow. <laughs> He's got you there. Think fast, Larry. You got him there, Bob. <laughs> Chick, have you seen Pop Benson? No, sir. He hasn't been around for two days. Hmm. Tell me you're still going to hang around with Pop Benson. It's funny he doesn't show up. Well, you know the old man. He's been here a long time. He's a privileged character. He's got a right to get drunk once in a while. It's not often. 
Well, drunk or sober, he's got to be somewhere. If I were you, I'd turn out that light and go home. Good night. Are you, Pop? I said I never wanted to see that newspaper again. I was wrong. Oh, I'm all mixed up in something I don't understand, and I'm not going to ask any questions. All I want is one more paper. Pop, please, for the last time. I'll never ask you again. I won't tell anybody how I got it, but I've just got to know what's going to happen tomorrow. It won't do you any good, Larry. Oh, but it will. It'll make me rich. Then I'll have everything I want. Is it only money you want in this world? I've got everything else. I'm in love. Give it to me, Pop. I'll be happy for the rest of my life. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Thanks for giving it to me, Pop. Remember, I didn't give it to you. to you too, Professor. Oh, an excellent idea. Won't you step into my dressing room? Thank you. Thank you. Sylvia, by the way, won't you introduce me to your friend here? Well, Uncle, this is Mr. Larry Stevens of the Evening News. Oh, Evening News. A journalist, eh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> step right in. <laughs> Journalism must be a very interesting profession. You get around quite a bit, I suppose. That's right, yes. Uh-huh. Professor, I, uh, I want to ask about your niece. Well, so do I, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> the strange thing that you find in your pockets. About your niece, sir. Uh... Uh, don't be frightened, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> Blank cartridge. You see, everything's illusion in my profession. Unfortunately, life is not an illusion. In the end, we always face reality. For instance, this is reality. Oh, Uncle, please don't play with that gun. Oh, I'm not playing with it, my dear. In the meantime, go over there and uh, open those curtains, please. That's a good girl. Now, take down those clothes. See here, Professor. Don't interrupt, Mr. Stevens. Which clothes, Uncle? My dear, I'm sure you know. I'm awfully sorry that I didn't return these sooner, but I was in a place where I couldn't get out. I can explain everything. So can I. Do these clothes fit you? Certainly they fit me. They're mine. Oh, no, 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 I said I'm going to marry her. Huh, listen to him change his tone. I'm not changing my tone at all. I said I'm going to marry her. No, you didn't. I said you're going to marry her. No one's asked me what I want. Nobody's going to ask you. He's right. Nobody's going to ask... No, 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 no. I'm asking you, darling. I love you. Say you'll marry me without any waiting. Tomorrow, say it. Larry. Do I have to say it? You don't have nothing to say. I'm doing all the saying around here. Now, go on. Get out of here. But not you, Mr. Stevens. You stay right here. There's something I want to ask you. Do you have any money? You think you'll support a wife? I think so, yes. Uh-huh. What's your prospects? Wonderful. Tonight, I have $100. Tomorrow, I'll have 100000 Ha! You expect me to believe that? Your business is to predict the future, isn't it? Yeah, what of it? Have you ever predicted five winners at a racetrack? 
Stop asking me those silly questions. So what are you, a gambler? No, 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 no. A gambler can lose. I can't. Ah, rubbish. I'll prove it to you. Can you stand a shock? I've seen about everything. Well, you haven't seen this. I can hardly believe it myself. Cut out this hocus pocus. What is it? Oh, you're busy, Sigurdina. Oh, come in, come in, Mr. Buxton. I want to see you alone. By all means, stay here. Listen, I'll leave it next week. Oh, it's too late, too late. And without you, Stephen. I know, I know. So your niece has been married. Didn't you know? To Mr. Larry Stevens of the Evening News. Congratulations, my dear Stevens. I read your articles to hold up the Union Bank. You're a hero. Come along, Mr. Stevens. Oh, I gotta stay. I gotta get I know, away. I know you're modest, but I want these good people out front to give you a hand. Now, you've got to take them out. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you a local hero. The man with the nose for news. The man who's there when things happen. The man who'll brave death if it makes news. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Stevens of the Evening News. Well, he's got no broken bones, he can get married, can he? He can get married as soon as he wakes up. Wakes up? It's noon, don't tell me he's still asleep. Well, when he brought him in last night, he was so restless that they gave him a hypodermic. Well, hypodermic or no hypodermic, go in there and tell him he's got to wake up. <sighs> he woke up, doctor, but he won't speak. He looks as if I scared him. <laughs> How are you feeling this morning, Mr. Stevens? Am I in the St. George Hotel? Do I look like a hotel clerk? This is a hospital. Where am I shot? In the arm. <laughs> I gave you a shot to make you sleep. Did I sleep two days? I hope. No, just one night. That's oh. all you needed, a good night's sleep. And all you need now is fresh air. Oh, I must have had a nightmare. Yeah. Fresh air will take away that headache. Get on your feet. Get outdoors. Anything else you wish, Mr. Stevens? Yes, where are my clothes? I'll get them for you. A nurse. Yes? Do you see anything in my coat pockets? No, Mr. Stevens, nothing at all. Only a newspaper. If there's anything else you wish, you can call me. sick man, quietly reading the newspaper. Tell me, how you feel? You all right? Well, I'm still alive. Oh, you're a lucky boy. You know, with a fall like that, you might have killed yourself. I guess my time hadn't come. I... What time is it? 
It's a little past noon. By the way, you know you're getting married today. I'm afraid I can't. What? You what? Well, I can't leave this room, not before tomorrow. It'll be fatal. Listen, you scallywag. I just been talking to your doctor out there. He says you're strong as a horse. Says you'll last a hundred years. He doesn't know anything about it. Oh! You're faking, huh? Think you didn't fool the doctor? You had no intentions to marry her, huh? You're trying to get out of it. No, no, I want to marry Sylvia. Tell her I'm on my way. Listen, I should have shot you last night. Doctor, nurse! Doctor, nurse! I'm going to get married, but I'll be back. Keep this room, and don't let me out of here again tonight. I now pronounce you man and wife, and may God bless your union. Congratulations, Mr. Stevens. I'm glad to see you so serious. Marriage is a serious business. It's meant to last a lifetime. Thank you, Judge. I wish you all the happiness and health in the world, and may all your trouble be little ones. That'd be five dollars, please. Anything else I can do for you? Yes, you, you can draw up my will. Sorry, you'll have to go to the races. I can't. Races? On your honeymoon? People don't go to the races on their honeymoon. Are you... What about your will? My will? Oh, all right. I want to leave everything to my widow. I mean, my wife. Eden Gardens, Cabby. No, I'll take him to the racetrack. Now, here are the names of the winners. I ain't going to no racetrack. Well, don't you want Sylvia to be rich? It's her last chance. Oh, Larry, darling, we can go some other day. Well, some other day won't do. Eden Gardens. All right, we'll go ourselves. No, we ain't gonna go. We're going to the Eden. Get in, darling. This is for you. All right, driver, hurry up to the racetrack. I want to get there in time to make a bet on the first race. Not if I get help, but driver, don't pay no attention to the bad. Take it to the Eden Gardens. Sorry, miss, there are no ladies permitted inside the betting ring. Good, can you keep him out, too? Wait here, dear. Oh, I better go there and watch him. Hundred dollars on Lamplighter. You wouldn't try to kid me, would you, mister? Lamplighter to win, here's a hundred. Go on, peddle your papers. Lamplighter just won by two lengths. Well, did I know the winner or didn't I? Ah, that's just fool luck. I never knew a gambler yet that didn't go broke. But I'm not a gambler. I tell you, I can't lose. That's the spirit, mister. How about picking a winner for the second race? You want me to tell you? Sure. Mudlark, the odds are 20 to 1. Do you want to lay that 100? Oh, sure, sure. Take the wide. Teach him a lesson. The sooner he goes broke, the sooner he's going to find out this is a sucker game. I'll send you back to the bullyard, you. Oh, what a dog. You wouldn't even make good cat meat. Mudlock. 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 He's there. Mudlock. <laughs> ah, don't be the thing. The other horses were slower, that's all. <laughs> $2,000, and my congratulations, sir. If I had your luck, friend, I'd ride it. That's just what I'm going to do. Why do you pay on lightning in the third? Straight place a show. To when? It's not for me, it's for Sylvia. Then I'll take the money and go on home. She's my niece, ain't she? I got a right and a duty to protect her future. I'll take the winnings, please. The other gentleman made the bet, my friend. The odds are five to one on lightning. What do you say? You're on. 2,000. Spoken like a sport. Give the gentleman a ticket, Jerry. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I won't say it. Lightning! Are you sure? You sure? Well, look for yourself! What? Lightning! You mean you want to bet all this money on Ramona? Right, to win. I'll take Ramona, too. I'm afraid that will have to be an even money bet, mister. Give me that money. I get four to one in place of this tent. You're a good customer. How about three to one? Three to one? Okay. Wait a minute, these brothers for suckers. This way we can only win 30,000. If Ramona wins. Of course, if Ramona will. Well, well, don't worry, Ramona will win. What is to be, will be. Oh, look, Larry, look, Ramona's out ahead. I know. Oh, isn't it wonderful, darling? Everything's turning out just the way you expect. 
everything. It's a lot of money to bet on one horse, mister. I can't give it two to one on Black Slash. I can get you five to one on Diablo. Black Slash. Oh, don't be so big head. What do you know about horses? Black Slash. You are 30,000 to win on Black Flash. For the love of Mike, would you put half it on Diablo? Black Flash. I've been in this business a long time, but I never heard of anyone picking four sure things in a row. Not unless he's got things fixed. I think I'll do a little fixing myself. Diablo's going to win this time if he never runs another race. Black Flash, Black Flash, Black Flash. Come on, Black Flash. Get away from me. Get away from me. You and your tips. Well, they were wrong. They were wrong. Black Flag's lost. If I had my gun, I'd shoot you. But I'm not going to get shot. If the back page is wrong, the front page can be wrong. Sylvia, what a mess you made out of your life. Look what you married. Oh, we're happy, Uncle. We're always going to be happy. Does anything else matter? The judges have the following official announcement to make. In the race which has just been run, number seven, Diablo has been disqualified. <laughs> The winner in the fifth race is Black Flash. Mm. Here you are, pay me, Mr. 60,000 Simoleon. And don't give it in the small bill. Hope you know this is going to clean me out. Ha <laughs> ha, better you in a sucker's game. <laughs> Three, four, five, 49, 50, 51. Driver, stop. What's the I'm not going back to town. But where else can we go? Anywhere. I, well, we could have a nice dinner here in the country someplace. Oh, Larry, will you do something for me? Something nice? Let's be gay. I'd like to have dinner someplace where there's music and people. I know. The St. George Hotel. No, no, not tonight, darling. All right, Larry, we'll go tomorrow night, some other time. Here you are, my dear. This makes you a rich woman. Oh, no. No, I'd be afraid to carry that much money. You better keep it. It'll be safer. Oh, no, I might lose it. Well, what about me? Please take it. Well, somebody's got to take it. Stop! Please! After him! After him! Stop! Stop, please! After him! Stop, please! Stop! Fast, the passenger driver. He's got $60,000 of our money. He's got a gun, too! Gun! Who cares? Sure, who cares? Get him out of here. You're wasting my time with your shenanigans. Shenanigans, my foot. I'm telling you, we chased the guys all the way into town. Then he arrests us for speeding. Why did you chase the guy that was stealing that money? It was over $60,000. 60000 Go on, who do you think I am? That's a fine police force. You let the thief escape and you arrest the victim. Come on, beat it, beat it. Yeah. You know, uh, wait a minute, you can't throw me out of jail. I'm arrested. Lock me up and don't let me out of here before tomorrow. Get out of here, both of you. I'm sick of you. Inspector, lock me up for just a half an hour. What for? Well, I'm arrested. Put me in jail. Jail? Where well, you belong is the bug house. Get him out of here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Inspector, do me a favor, will you? Just lock me up here for 35 minutes. Yeah. You don't know what it means. Get out of here. And stay out. I wonder why he didn't want us to go in there with him. Maybe he had some personal business to attend to, Uncle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fellow must be in there. He gives them to all the winners. I hope he finds them. Larry! Oh, Larry. Larry! Where you been all day? Yeah, the boss is tearing his hair. Looking all over town for his number one reporter. Here, listen. Have any of you fellows seen Pop Benson? Well, what's the matter? Where is he? You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? Why? The old man is dead. Dead? I'm writing his obit. 
What caused it? Just old age, I guess. When did you last see him? We all saw him, Larry. You were here. When? Well, three nights ago. He died just after we left him. You remember? We were all kidding in the library. Remember how we all laughed when he said, how do you know you've got 10 years to live? Poor old fella. Good thing he didn't know he only had time to get home himself. Oh, don't take it so hard, Larry. When they found the old man, they said he had a smile on his face. Sure, he was always happy. <laughs> Remember how he always tried to play jokes on people? Yeah. <laughs> Here, come in here. Look at that clock. Ten past six. How long do you expect to hold down your job? Not very long, Mr. Gordon. Right. But I'm going to give you another chance. I have an overnight assignment for you. I can't make it. I have an appointment at 625. Cancel it. I'll do my best. I got a tip something big is going to break. I'll give you the address. Never mind. I, I know where it is. Where? St. George Hotel. St. George Hotel? That's not it. The other side of town. You mean you're not sending me to the St. George Hotel? Can't you read? Mr. Gordon, aren't you making a mistake? Am I in the habit of making mistakes, young man? Now you get in the cab and get over there right away. All right. But I'm afraid I'm going to wind up at the St. George Hotel at 6.25 no matter where I go. St. George Hotel? I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong somewhere. It's in a different direction. It's in the opposite direction. Stevens, forget that assignment I gave you. Huh? Go to the St. George Hotel. What for? Oh, you know what for, my boy. You've got the best nose for news in this town. If you said St. George Hotel, you had a reason to say St. George Hotel. No, you no, can't no, fool no. me. I know where no. your appointment is. No. It's 6.15 now. Hurry up. I don't want you to be late. Stick around, boys. We're getting out an extra. You mean to say that we ain't going to get no more tips? Oh, I don't care. We'll get along. Larry has a job. What the, the, the time is it? The time? 6.30. It can't be. Well, my watch may be slow. Driver, what time you got? 20 after 6, sir. Don't be so nervous, dear. We've plenty of time. Sure, we're almost there. Where? The St. George Hotel. Who said St. George Hotel? You did. That's what you said when you got in this cab. St. George Hotel, St. George Hotel. Oh, you knew I wanted to have our wedding party there. Driver, driver, stop, stop. Will you, turn around and go the other way, quick. No, hold it, hold it. I'll get out here. Larry. Sophia, darling, don't argue, please, if you love me. First you want to go to the St. George Hotel, now you don't want to go to the St. George Hotel. I've got my fare, mister. Oh, uh, you'll have to pay the cabbie. I, I left all my money in my wallet and the thief took it. This cab for hire, driver? Will be when I get paid.
Have you seen a man in a gray check suit who's been running away from me? Duck, you fool, he's shooting at us. I'll get him. Get out! Get out! Get up. Stevens, Evening News. What? What? Stevens? Why, yes, I sent him to St. George Hotel myself. A few minutes ago. Huh? Well, no. No, the man was on duty. The man's a hero. He knew something big was going to happen at the St. George Hotel. Hello. Hello! What's happened, Mr. Gordon? Tell the press room. We're getting out an extra. Hold everything. Hop over to the St. George Hotel. They just shot Stevens. What? Hurry up, hurry up. Take this down. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, shot to death in the lobby of St. George Hotel. Outside, everybody. Go on, outside. What happened? Nothing, nothing. Some newspaper guy was killed, that's all. Who was it? Oh, uh, Harry something, ha Harry... Uh... Stevens? Yeah, Stevens. Now go on, get out. Here, where are you going? Evening news. All right, go ahead. Larry! Larry, you're just supposed to be dead. Yeah, I know. They say I am. What do you think? Oh, you're alive! This is terrible. That's not a public telephone. Get me the evening news, quick! Inspector. Inspector, for Pete's sakes, tell me what happened. What am I doing here? I've already told you. I'm getting awful sick of you, Stevens. Is this yours? Yeah. Then how did it get in the pocket of the man who was killed? I get it. I get it. Well, answer me. Inspector, you're a wonderful man. I love you. Hey, see, you said that. I'm alive. I'm alive. It's wonderful. It's awful. Howard Extra, with your death story is on the streets. Extra evening news reporter shot to death. Extra, get your paper. Extra, sir. No, thanks. I've got it. This just came out. That's all right. I can live without it. What I'd like to know is what happened to that money. Oh, who cares? Didn't seem real anyway. That's right. Came in like a dream, went out like a dream. That racetrack ain't no dream, though. It's a man's assist to clean up millions. All you gotta do is pick them. That's all. Good night. Good night, kids. You interested in horse racing? I'll play sure things. You must have a good system. You said it, friend. Just come around tomorrow and I'll show you how it's done. It's very simple. All you do is take the money that you win on the first race, and you bet it on the winner in the second race. Then you take the money that you won on the second race, and you bet it on the winner in the third race. And then you don't lose your nerves, see, but you take the whole bundle, and you put it on the winner in the fourth race. Then you take the money. Cab. Cab. Larry, darling, we can't take a cab. Why not? We haven't any money. Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to wait here till the rain stops. Poor darling, what a wedding night. No money, no cab, no umbrella, no shelter, no nothing. Nothing but a wonderful future. Mm, don't tell them you can read the future. Let's always take life as it comes. <laughs> Larry, darling, I only pretended to read the future. 
We had to in our act. Oh, but when I'm close to you, I, I really feel I can look way ahead. Years and years. What do you see? Are we happy? Oh, we'll always be happy as long as we're together. Just the two of us. Just the two of us? Oh, no, I want at least four sons. Fine, fine. And I want five daughters. Well, it'll have to be a big house. Oh, big enough. I wonder how we can afford it. You'll be the owner of the evening news. Well, then we can have a whole house full of children. Oh, big enough for grandchildren, too. Great grandchildren someday. I can almost see them. Fifty years from tonight. That'll be our golden anniversary. something anyway. <laughs> 